But first, we gotta evaluate mount. So we have pre-mount, mount on the hips, low mount, high mount, then like mount, you're totally screwed about to get submitted mount, right? And those are all in a timeline, okay? So we're gonna start pre-mount, just like this, okay? So first thing that's gonna happen, Eric's gonna get side control on me. He's gonna have his knee connected to me. He's gonna have like a lockdown position, just like this. An easy way for Eric to mount is to just slide his knee across, right? Everybody agree? Yeah. Slides it all the way across, boom. His knee touches the floor, that foot flops, and it comes underneath my leg, just like that, right? So go back. Everybody can see that? Good. So now, watch this. When he goes to do, I start to feel, because look, I've exhausted all my turn-ins. I can't get that knee in. He's a black belt, he's super good, right? So now his knee's gonna start cutting across. When it starts to cut across, I'm just gonna be here like this. Now you see this knee posted to the floor and my foot like that? When Eric now flops his foot, he wants to get that foot underneath my leg. Go ahead, try to dig it underneath there. I'm just not allowing it. I'm not allowing it. You know what I mean? I see this hole. Okay, so let's go back. Because if my foot stays up like this, his knee touches the floor and it flops right underneath and then he has a hooking control. We wanna just prevent all that. So if I have to exhaust, if he starts to cut, the first thing I do is I just go here, boom. Right there, see now, see that foot, is, it can't get there. So now I just reach over and take it. And I lock it up, okay? This is all preventative. And it's gonna be very hard, even if he tries to stay onto the mount, here, right there, you see I got my frames, and it's just, I'm just waiting. He's gotta move, and it's gonna be very hard. Even see right there, oh, there's the knee. Because right to here, if he tries to switch, up to like a side mount, see that leg's gotta come up. Keep going, see right there, hook, and then I can get a sweep. So what we're doing is preventing him from mounting us, from this specific mount. So this is all pre-mount, does this make sense? So that the drill we did, I was here, watch. He's trying to cut across. If I'm like this, he wins. His knee touches the floor and it flops under my foot. He's got me. But if I just go like that, and I try to fill that space with my knee and my elbow, it makes him really hard and that foot's just gonna be flopping. I'm gonna reach over and capture it, hook it, stuff it through the hole, boom, and I'll just be tied up in half guard. You can get the closed guard, just go ahead and get the closed guard, okay? So really quick, one more time. So we're here, super silly. He starts to cut, I turn, boom. See that there? That foot's right there, oh, I can even capture it. Feed it. Pull it. See, I'm pulling, stuff it, turn in, and now I'm stuck in hamper. If you want to do the full process, hip out, cut the close guard, make that happen. Everybody got it? Super simple. One, two, three. I want you, he's going to lay down. I'm going to put my elbow on the mat just like this. I'm going to kind of get like right here. So he's got his legs up. So this is what we refer to as like a switch, a reverse switch base, okay? What I wanna do now is kinda be up high. If I pull his legs right to here, I'm gonna bring my heel over the top, just like that, and then that's gonna be the mount that we're gonna be dealing with next, okay? Now, it could be my elbow here, I could be under the neck, it doesn't matter, but does everybody understand what this position is? Okay, reverse switch base. So now, the best thing for him to do is keep this knee right here. No, 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 right here, watch. Put this foot right there. Mm -hmm. See that? Because, or when he starts to feel me try to pull his legs, he pulls his knee to his chest. And then here, he pushes me. Hips back, huh, and I land right in the door. Okay, and this is super silly stuff. But what makes this work is under the element of timing, right? So I'm just gonna get like this. He's kind of resting and I'm gonna, I might even like smack his foot, I might be doing this, but the second he feels me trying to mount him, because he can feel me, he's gonna bring this knee up, just like that. And a lot of times, bring it just like that, boom. And then kick over, and now once this happens, this knee is gonna transfer weight, so he's gonna feel the weight on his hip transfer to this knee, and then he's gonna give me a little push and a hip back. Boom, right there, oh, land right in the door. This is all just preventative mount, the best kind of mount. Okay, so one more time, I'm here. Keep it simple, far leg. 
Step over, boom, he pushes, hips back, and then you land right in the butterfly loop. Okay, does this make sense? Yep. Super simple stuff, okay? Yep. This is the stuff that's not in the book, ever. All right, so let's give that a shot, okay? One, two, three, three minutes. Side control, boom, he cuts to the mount, boom. I try to touch his arm right there here. See, I'm touching his arm. Why would I touch his arm? And he roll. So I can bridge and roll him. And as I touch his arm, and he feels me kind of do this to him, what is he gonna do? Pull away. So as he sits up, go ahead, sit all the way up. Boom, that's what I'm gonna go. All right? Because hip escaping or shrimping to the guard has to happen when he sits on my hips. See right here? So he's sitting on my hips. So if I just feel him sit, sit down, like drop on me, that's when I hip escape, okay? Why? Because he's sitting on my hips. It's the name of the move, all right? So now, when he sits on my hips and I feel that pressure on my hips, I just pick which way I wanna go. Here's the mistake that everybody makes. White belt mistake, watch. They do this, ready? <clears throat> they pull forward. No, you got a three, you got a nine o'clock and a three o'clock. This is our halfway point. Hold your arms out for a second. I wanted to see the visual. A nine o'clock, three o'clock. Go one click back. One click back. Eight o'clock, four o'clock. That's where I aim. Four o'clock or eight o'clock. Does that make sense? Now, what I don't want to do is try to hip escape with both feet up. Because if I'm here like this, a lot of times I might be hooking this foot. And you see, I just stuck myself. I locked myself. So whatever side that I pick, remember, one leg down, see that? Hip, ball of the foot, push off. Right there, those are just the fine little details of hip escaping. So our drill is gonna be this. He's side control, I've got side control. He cuts to the mouth, I missed my opportunity. I'm already here holding him, making him think I'm gonna take him this way, but he pops up. Cool, I ride that momentum right to there. Hip escape back. Pull the guard, okay? Because there's no value in me coming down here just to show individual techniques. We have to show the process of the fight. And there's gonna be baits, there's gonna be fakes, there's gonna be feints. When he cuts to the mount, I am fully intending on bridge and rolling him. But he knows better, black belt, pulls his arm out. This up transfers all the weights to the hips for just a little second. That's when I take advantage of the opportunity. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So can we make that happen? All heads facing that way, start on side control, cut to the mount, bottom guy, hold that arm. Almost like you're pulling a slingshot. Hold that arm. Once you feel them pull back, let go of the slingshot because they're gonna go drop. Put your hand right to their hip on the side that you're attacking and take them in that angle. Because I was attacking this arm they come up, attack that hip, attack that angle, and then hip out. Everybody understand? Cool. One, two, three. We looked at, we looked at the hip escape. That, and remember, understanding the transition of when do I hip escape. I don't want to try to hip escape when somebody is chest to chest on me. I want to hip escape when they're sitting up. Right now, I trap and roll or bridge and roll when they're low to me. Right, so now let's look at the opposite of everything. Okay, so if I'm on the bottom of the mount, and because there's always going to be the what if hey, coach, I did that shrimp escape, but he held on really tight and then he smooshed me back down. Awesome. So, we're going to start right here. This is going to be our reference point. So, everybody agrees, he's sitting on my hips. I'm going to pick a hand and an elbow. I'm gonna straighten that leg and I'm gonna throw him to eight o'clock. But what's gonna happen is he's gonna post really hard and he's either gonna hook my neck or grab my gate. Boom. Man, and I'm trying to, and every time I hip escape, he, his elbow and his, ham, and his hamstring just keep getting stronger. Right? Now, white belts, you're gonna see, oh, I failed. As I fail, I transition to the next move. Higher ranks are gonna see, well, I'm just gonna do that 
and just force it. Because to me, this is an attacking combination from the bottom. To lower, lower ranks, this is a, um, a defensive recounter. Okay? Does everybody understand what I mean by that? If you see the defensive recounters, oh, one move failed to go to the next. Well, no, I just always do this because it's an attack. I'm just jabbing you in the face and then seeing how you respond, and then you stepped into my cross. That's how this worked. So, but I was attacking the whole time. So higher ranks should see this as an attack. Lower ranks see this as a counter defense. Okay, so watch. So from here, he's sitting up. Cool, I attack that. And then, you know what? Cool, I'm just going to keep wiggling. I know I'm not going to get out. So as he drops his knee and his elbow, I hook, I trap, I chop, and I'm up. Boom. Okay, so that's going to be the move. Keep it as simple as possible. Get him to post. Top guy, I need you to ride him. Post and just keep driving back down. And bottom person, let him. Let him win. Let him think that they got you. Because once their nose crosses center line, they gone. Just keep the arm trapped. Anybody need to see it again? Yes, please. Okay, great. Here. Super simple. He's up. Throw him to the side. I'm like, oh, man. Mm -mm -mm. See right to here? Hook. Trap, chop, posture, up. <coughs> cool. For one, two, three. Three minutes. Now, you got the up position, we got the down position. But what if he's got the down position and I am just getting annihilated, so he's smooshing me? So, first off, let's go hook position. So, he's got double hooks. So, he's double hook me, yeah, just like that. Okay? Uh, actually, get the hands, because that's really annoying. Yeah, see that right there? So, now we want to look at this. So dealing with this, right? So as he's holding my upper body, he's got my lower body, and I can't move, and I can't, and he's attacking my arm. And the only way I'm gonna get this arm back is if I get my legs back, because I'm just not physically strong enough. So what has to happen is I have to get off these hooks. All right, can you look at my feet for a second? You guys know how to do the uh, bicycle? Yeah? So, put my feet again. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bicycle. I'm gonna pull one knee to his butt, and I'm gonna kick the other one. Just like that. Okay? And then I keep my feet on the inside. See, I'm like, instead of my feet are out wide, every time I put my feet out wide, he's got a hook. So get the hook again, he's got a hook. Or he can cross his feet under my butt. See that right there? That's even worse. Okay? So if he goes back to the hooks, right here, I got a bicycle. So I go one knee up, one knee down. So I go, see that? Right there, bicycle. Wow. And then I put my feet on the inside and I make it very hard. See right here? I'm trying to make it very hard for him to get underneath my feet, because I don't want that. Now watch this, he's still holding me. So now what's gonna happen? I am going to, I'm on the insides right now of his feet. Can you guys see that? Mm -hmm. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go. Now he's gonna keep attacking me, but I'm gonna keep getting his leg, right? And then I'm gonna keep working and trying to hump back. Because these are the little fights. This is the higher rank fight, okay? Because now it's tactical because he's got position on me. So if he starts to there, and he's just smushing me, he's got my neck, and he's doing all that stuff, and I'm like, I'm defending my arm just by doing this. This is the time that you want to do this. It's because he's attacking my arm. I'm holding this, and then I'm gonna start to get my legs. And he says, see my leg now is flat and straight. As he tries to weave back underneath it, I'm gonna make it very hard for him. And he says, I start turning my hip out, and I'm just trying. Now sometimes, I might be able to reach down, grab his foot. And hook it, and then get back into that. And this is just your humping position, okay? This is not great for me because I'm getting smushed. But this is your like last resort stuff. Don't get me wrong. If he's got the hooks on me like this, if he's got both hooks and I can get this hook off, I'm trying to hit that bridge and roll, right? But as this happens, and he does something to do that, now watch this. I gotta take opportunity from the loss. If you guys are always just bumping, failing, resetting, bumping, failing, resetting, you're not failing forward. You're just failing. So if I fail here, forward, and he posts, then I move my hip. Because that is the move. When you go side bump, <coughs> shoulder, or hips back. But guys are just doing this. Right? So you gotta fail forward. 
Does that make sense? Absolutely. So you can either leg weave it out, or you can fail forward. And, you're, and that, that failure back is the crack. That's the time that you, have, you guys have to study. Because you gotta remember, when we do martial arts, when I was a kid, everybody say, you, you play karate, right? You play karate. It's like you play football, you play baseball, you play basketball. You play karate. And my mom, my mom still says, hey, you know, you still, how's karate? How are you playing karate? I don't play karate. I study. Okay? And we have to study these transitions, this element of time. It's the time. Te you got technique and time. So we want to study these little pieces of time. And if you don't get it right now, that's okay. Focus on the technique. Technique done so over so many times, you'll find you'll find little pieces of success, and, and then you'll be like, oh wait a minute, if I do it at this time, the word time will just start popping out. It's just automatically going to evolve for you, which is cool. <clears throat> but I'm also telling you because nobody told me that. Uh, that was just something that had to be figured out over a long time, right? Because you guys are so lucky. You got four black belts on the mat right now. And a purple belt, or a couple purple belts. Well, I was a blue belt when we met, right? I was a blue belt, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like we've been, I just been using these guys to figure stuff out. And I learned just as much from them as they, they do from me. You know what I mean? I'm just kind of steering the ship. So, um, so we're studying this element of time. So for right now, just to finish off what we're doing, okay? I want you to get smushed. And all I want you to do is you're being smushed, protect your arm, you're in a bad leg situation. This is called leg pummeling. Kick the legs off, get the inside hooks. Once I got the inside feet, straighten one leg, remember? Now, don't hook out, just heel walk. Hip. And start to make it really uncomfortable for them. Because here's the thing, what are they doing to you? Making it uncomfortable for you, right? So now I'm gonna start taking away their position, okay? I'm gonna start putting water under their house so it starts to shift, right? That's what's happening. And then they're like, uh, 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 maybe I should care about my position more than this arm, right? Because nobody never said you can't attack from the bottom. So watch, last time here. So we're here, he's got me in a really tough situation. He's got me in the hooks. I'm defending my arms and my neck. I do my bicycle kick, boom, get my hooks, boom. See that leg? Go ahead, look at this. Watch, I immediately go, bah! And I'm already, see I'm healing out, and I'm starting to work this knee up. And I'm just, right to there. And it's like making it very uncomfortable for him. Now that I feel secure, I can start bringing this hand in play and just start grabbing his foot. I can start to hook it. It starts to change things. He has to get the underhook with this arm. Yeah, boom. Now I get the underhooks, and I hit back, okay? Does everybody make sense? So that's more in the game. So everybody probably said a couple times when we do open mat, let's just do a couple mount rounds first for fun, and then we'll do like regular rounds. Does anybody have any questions? All right, the only way you're gonna get good at this is to don't freak out on the bottom. Just chill, all right? You're gonna lose. I lost like a lot yesterday. Got submitted by a bunch of guys, so it was awesome. Okay, so everybody got it? Let's do it, one, two, three.